have you noticed that a lot of the rare plants that were very difficult to find even about a year ago are coming into the market en masse? And may have got some of them. Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I thought I'd do an interesting video that I haven't done this type of video before, mainly because I haven't bought plants for nearly two or three years, at least not in quantity. <laughs> and I know that a lot of you have seen enough unboxings at this point, so I didn't want to do another unboxing, but I wanted to maybe talk about some of the plants that I have got in the last few months that I've maybe not shared with you. Mainly because, this would be a bit of a heads up, some of these plants will come to the review series soon as well, and I know I haven't done a review series video in a while, but I'm taking a tiny bit of a break, maybe for a month or two, from heavy kind of review series uploads, purely because I kind of want to up review something for you that I've had for a long period of time, and maybe not just do an update review. So I've got some plants coming up soon, in, in about a month or two, that will be a year old, and as always, I will bring you those reviews and hopefully you will enjoy. But I wanted to talk about some of these plants that normally would have just gone under the radar. I haven't done an unboxing because I might have got one at a time or two. So they weren't quite so kind of spectacular to share with everybody. And I know I've done enough of these unboxings and plant new plant videos, but bear with me. I've not had the excitement of buying plants for a long period of time and being able to share it with everybody. So I want to do that with you. And there's still going to be fun and educational content coming out as always. So the first one that I wanted to talk about, which I picked up because I randomly came across it at a local garden centre. Anybody who's based around the east of Anglia, if you've never heard of Taverham Garden Centre, don't think they've got a very specific good, yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The website isn't great. I know they're trying to improve things. I don't know whether or not you can buy any of that online, but it's definitely a place that if you can go to physically, it's great. It's always got some of these more hard to find plants for really reasonable prices as well. So one of the things, and this isn't that rare of a plant, but this is a plant and I <laughs> swore blind that I was not going to get another Calathea. <laughs> This looks a bit like, and I'm not entirely sure I say it looks a bit like, I got this as a baby plant thinking, you know what, it's kind of like the white fusion that I've been wanting to buy for nearly four years now. And I know much bigger versions of this came in the market, they were kind of pricey, and I know that people struggle with them, and I'm just like, Ugh. it's difficult for a Calathea, and the Calathea, standard Calatheas are too much of a drama queen for me to even be bothering with anymore. But you know what, this was tiny, I tend to have better success when I start them off tiny and growing in my space. And also it really wasn't that expensive anymore. So I'm just like, you know what? That version of me from a few years back that wanted this plant and had kind of resigned myself that I wasn't going to get it because it wasn't available, or I wasn't going to get it because it was too fussy, or I wasn't going to get it because it was too expensive. That version of Memo is very happy right now. <laughs> because I finally got this, and at least I'm going to try it. And I say I think it's like the White Fusion, because I don't think this was called White Fusion when I bought it, and the place that I was talking about did have some White Fusions, and they called them White Fusions. So I don't know whether or not the Calathea White Fusion has got a trade name now that people are using, or whether or not this is a different Calathea altogether. I think when I looked up the name that this was sold as, that it is slightly different than the Calathea White Fusion, although everything that I could find online comparing those two, and I'll put the name at the top basically, um, said that they're very similar looking, you wouldn't know the difference basically. So yeah, so far so good. I've not had this in my care for too, too long. I think maybe a couple of weeks. I'm trying to see, did I just spot some spider mites? Because 
Calatheas. And I also wanted to see if it was going to grow okay, because I know the white fusion is one of those things that people just like, it needs to grow in a terrarium, otherwise it won't be happy. And yes, there's decent levels of humidity and light and all these things in here and air movement, but it's still not a terrarium. So true terrarium plants will do okay in here, but they will still struggle. So I wanted to see. So far it's good and it is bringing me immense joy because I've wanted this in one way or another for a while. So bear with me whilst I take a moment to revel in the fact that I have got, for all intents and purposes, a white fusion. It might not be, as I said, but close enough. Now coming into a plant that I was trying to get for a long period of time, and I think this was on my wish list video. And I've had conversations with a couple of you that were very, I love it when you all DM me, especially when you know that I'm looking for certain plants and you just go, oh, this has come available. Have you seen it? And it's like nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10, I haven't. So I really do appreciate it. I might not buy it every time, but I really do appreciate it because I can look at it and go, ooh, I could. And if it's a good deal, I will. So love that you, there's a lot of you that do that. It, it, brings me such joy throughout the day. Thank you so, so much. But this is a plant that I kept finding as cuttings, rooted cuttings, for around the same price that I got a full plant of it, and a more mature form as well, because I wanted it to be mature. So I'm going to lift it up because it's big. So again, without decapitating everything, this might just look like a regular epipremnum until you see some of these top leaves. Can you guess what this is? See there, like, grants the white background in the back. This is a mature form, well, the top bits are mature forms, of the Epipremnon Skeleton Key. I cannot tell you how long I've been waiting for this. And I think this was from Grow Tropicals. Let me put this down, because it's very heavy. It's down now because, oh, my back, my arms, I can't. That was from Grow Tropicals and it came up on their Instagram and I need to stop doing that now because I've spent too much money with like Grow Tropicals. Not saying that I don't want to, but I also don't want to, I want to save some money, but zero, zero self-control, zero. But with that plant, as I said, it was great because you can see those mature leaves. Oh, Actually, let me see if I can put it on the table next to me without chattering everything else next to me. Oh, and that works. So yeah, you can kind of see why it's called the skeleton key. It's that really weird shape of the leaf. It almost looks like something has kind of chewed it off, but it really does look like a skeleton key. Absolutely. Beautiful. And I think the first time I saw this was years ago now, pre-pandemic days, I think, from Legends of Monstera, I think, on here on YouTube. And he was saying as well when he was trying to purchase it and it doesn't ship particularly well. This shipped exceptionally well, but it was already on a pole and I've already, pretty much the day that I got it, it was above its pole. So there's been an extension pole added on. I was going to put this somewhere else instead of in here, but when I saw quite how large it was and then realized I was going to have another pole on top of it, I'm just like, eh, it's going to have to live in here somewhere. And it lives behind the camera now on the floor because I ain't got no space. But again, that this has been a good summer in terms of purchases and that's why I thought I'd share them with you because the, the memo from a few years ago who wanted these plants, who never thought they were going to come across to me or get them in a format that I wanted. Because obviously, as I said, this has been available as cuttings, usually possibly some rooted cuttings, possibly small, smaller juvenile plants, but in this leaf format, which just looked like an epipremnum penatum, basically. And it's it did take a while, so it's kind of halfway up the plant that it started turning into those mature leaves. So, and I didn't want to necessarily do that all the time because it, uh, sometimes for me, for the epipremnums, it takes a while before they start showing those mature leaves and I've got zero patience. But today's video generally 
is kind of living proof of what I keep saying, that if you want to get something and it's ridiculously priced, wait. If, you can, if you've got the patience to wait, you will eventually get a plant that you wanted a few months or years ago, basically. It's not for everybody, not everybody has the patience and it becomes available. And I really don't think this was that expensive. For some of these plants that I kind of, if I still remember the prices, I will kind of add them at the top there. But great, great specimen, big specimen, fantastic. And obviously this is something that I would have imagined has come over from the growers in the Netherlands. And there's a certain big YouTuber on here that years ago said, you would all be surprised what's already growing and what's not gonna have that huge value in price because it's gonna come in Mass market soon. <laughs> this is obviously one of them. But yeah, really super happy that I've got this. And so far it's growing really well. Shall we do another large plant? Because I can bring it down and put it back up again. Because it is. This one's wide as well. And I've done my usual trick with this one where I've only just recently watered it, so it's probably going to drip water all the way down me. So, <laughs> can you tell what this plant is? This is the newest leaf, I don't want to bend it too, too much. The Philodendron UPI. Very cool, very, very cool. This was the leaf that came to me when it was still unfurling, so that kind of small dot of not variegation. Because I've had this conversation with too many people. Is, that, is this variegation? Is this happening naturally as a sport? If it persists and it keeps coming out from all the plants, congrats, it probably is. If it's only on one leaf, think of it as a pixel on your TV screen that's misfiring. Does that make it kind of easier to understand? That could happen as well. So really, really cool plant, <laughs> obviously, the UPI. Not for everybody. Like friends that have come around, they're just like, what's wrong with that plant? And it's like, nothing. It is perfect. And it's showing exactly what it needs to show, which is that weird leaf structure. And again, when I saw this years ago, instantly fell in love. I, I, <laughs> if you've been here long enough, you know that I like the weird things. This looks weird. It takes a lot of boxes, basically. But this was a good deal actually, the price was insane and it was like a pre-order that again, this is another one, Grow Tropical. Grow Tropical has been enabling me this summer to get a lot of things. But again, I would imagine for those prices and the fact that I also remember the nursery that I was just mentioning a moment ago for that Calathea, they also had this in stock as well. So I would imagine this has all come from the Netherlands. So this is the same batch that I was telling you that there's a whole bunch of plants that are going to get released from the Netherlands that are going to lose some of that stupid value that they had previously because there's going to be a lot more of them coming into the market and they're becoming a lot more available for a lot more people, which I think is good. But you can see what I mean, it's, this is wide. It's not quite tall yet, but it's wide. So let me put this down and let's move on. Should we go for a similar type vibe of a plant? And again, this was another Grow Tropicals purchase. And again, this was another plant that I have seen in the local plant nursery. So I'm assuming it's come over from the Netherlands. This one actually surprised me on how much joy it brought me. I wasn't expecting it. So this is, and I'll bring it in so you might be able to see some of the leaves, very, very faded. But this is the Philodendron Paraiso Verde. So this is a leaf that's come in, this was the newest leaf and it's fully green. And I've been doing some research to see what you can help in terms of the variegation with this, if it's reverting, how to do it. And I think there's something to do with temperature and light with this one, unlike a lot of the other plants that are variegated. I will caveat that. But yeah, this one's growing exceptionally well. I've moved it into, uh, soil Ninja Arrowed Mix, a lot of these plants that you're seeing in soil mixes, they are in the Soil Ninjas Philodendron and Monstera mix. So far, so good. Uh, I think, I think it was Kaylee Ellen that said that this is, potentially I think it's this one that she was talking about, it's either this one or, um, can't remember the plant that actually came in one of the rescue boxes that I got from Kaylee and I'll put it at the top there. 
but I think it's this one that grows roots like mad. This is growing roots like mad, absolute madness. So yeah, this came to me really good. It came, it had a second growing tip or a leaf and it wasn't unfurling and I tried to unfurl it and I don't know if you can see what happened. The leaf kind of pretty much snapped. So I lost this one, but it's okay. Um, so I shall see about what's going to happen in terms of the variegation with this plant. I know that it's something to do with light, so this is actually getting loads of light at the moment. So it might just be this one's green. I don't know how this grows fully yet, so I don't know whether or not it starts off fully green and then it fades into that variegation level. It might not be. I don't think it does from what I've seen. But this is really cool. So this is a plant that I always found interesting, but for the prices that it was going and for how difficult it was to find, I'm just like, I don't care enough. But for this price and the fact that it's more readily available, again, as I said, probably from the Netherlands and probably from the growers there, yeah, I'll give it a try. It becomes more, this is what I like when prices go down, it becomes a lot more of a, yes, let's give this a try. And as with a lot of us, and we've had these conversations in the comments down below, you might be getting a plant that you weren't 100% sure that you desperately wanted to get before, and you get it and you bring it in your house, and, and all of a sudden, over time, you completely fall head over heels in love with it. It's more doable when the prices are a bit more reasonable. And I do understand that, again, I'm coming from a place of privilege for the prices that I've given for these plants. Again, some people might not be able to afford them. so. And all I would say to you again, you might just have to wait a tiny bit longer, but I'm sure they will keep coming down in price. Okay, let's move on to something that isn't a philodendron or an anthurium. Still an aroid. So this was only purchased yesterday, because again, I found it at a decent enough price. It's small. But I wanted one of these, I would have loved to get a huge one, but this was at a decent price. And again, this is from the garden centre that I was talking about just a moment ago. So this is the Ficus Elastica Chiveriana, so the variegated Ficus Elastica. And I did want to get this a few years back. These used to come out around this time of the year actually, interestingly enough. So I think there's blocks of this plant that come out around this time of the year, generally from some of the Netherlands kind of growers, but never anything this small and never anything for as affordable as I found this. And I'm sure when I add the price here, some people might say that they found it even cheaper there, but there was a lot more of these. So these used to come into the UK and go super quickly. And I've been wanting one of these for years. Again, these majority of pretty much all of these plants are plants that I've wanted for years. And I never thought I was able to afford them or could never find them in time before they disappeared. So immense amounts of joy. So happy that I can actually say that I finally got these in my collection now. So yeah, very, very, very cool plant. And I am looking forward to seeing this one grow. This one I was going to put in my bedroom window because something... So for the people that have been here for a while, the... Pregnant onion plant, the massive pregnant onion plant that I had is getting retired. One of my friends would love to have that. That's really not bringing me joy anymore. It's big and scraggly, but they fell in love with it. So I'm just like, you can have it, but I've got space now there. But it gets a lot of kind of relatively bright light in that window. And I know for a lot of the ficus elasticas, generally they do appreciate that level of light. I, <laughs> I'm still hoping to put that there, but I've, anybody who has got this and has been growing it for a while, the things that I'm finding online is that saying that this plant likes bright and direct towards medium light and actually doesn't like those kind of brighter light levels that you would get with a standard ficus elastica. Has that been your experience as well? I'm really hoping somebody says, no, 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 it's fine. It will take like loads of like proper heat basically there was some places that were saying that it still needs kind of some humidity i mean it's a bedroom humidity so it'll probably only be between 50 and 60 percent but do let me know please if you've got this plant and you're growing it kind of in similar condition and if it's doing well massively appreciate it because i would ultimately like to not have this in here i would like to have this in my bedroom because this can bring me daily joy when i open up my curtains in the morning 
But yeah, so far, so good. And again, so this one I'd run out of the philodendron mix from Soil Ninja, but Soil Ninja is is kind of a soil mix that is being sold at the same garden center, but they didn't have the philodendron one. They just have this as their basic mix. And I've added it in unaltered. So let's see. But I generally know that most of the ficus elasticas generally tend to do okay. And to be fair, ficus elastica is the only ficus that I have been able to grow okay over the years. You might be able to see the taniki behind me. That's one of the few ficuses that I've still got left in my collection. So I'm hoping this one might not be too much of a prima donna. I also repotted it, so I don't know whether or not it's going to leave, it's going to drop half of its leaves because ficuses, ficuses do that. They don't like change. But yeah, so this is bringing me some joy as well. Uh, the next one is very exciting and it is a monstera and it's not a monstera that everybody's going to, maybe it is actually. People have been here for a while, they'll know. And I've got one of you lovely lot to thank for suggesting this one. Carrie, this is a big shout out for you and a big thank you. But, ta-da! Might not look like a lot. And I, again, I would have liked to have got a top cutting of a mature form, but this is the Monstera, and I had to think there, Escaletto, previously known as Epipremnoides. And this was the original two leaves that it came with, and it didn't really even have a growing point yet, but it was really well rooted. I've given it kind of one of these moss poles, and again, thank you for anybody who suggested, I can't remember who it was now, to not have quite as much moss in there, but also have some cocoa chips in there. I did purchase those, and I have done those, and these moss poles are a lot lighter and they retain, interestingly enough, they retain their moisture for a bit longer so I don't have to water quite as regularly. But can you see the newest leaves that is coming in and it hasn't unfurled yet. So considerably larger than any of the previous ones, even though this wasn't a top cut, I cannot tell you how excited I am to watch this grow. Remind me of this when this gets huge, hopefully, and I have nowhere to put it because I have seen these and they get quite large and in charge and people struggling with struggle to like where they're gonna put it with the big floppy leaves. That's a future memo problem, but right now, so happy. Again, this is one that I've been looking to get pretty much since I got my first ever Adansonii. More so than a bleaker or anything like that. This one always was for me and I'm just like, oh, it's like an Adansonii on steroids. Cannot tell you how much I'm happy to get this in, in my care. And I don't think it was that expensive. I don't think it was the cheapest one out of all of these plants that I'm showing you now, but I had it at the top there. And this was an eBay purchase. So again, Carrie, thank you so much. That link, beautifully done. But yeah, cannot wait to see the Monstera Escaletto grow even bigger. Another plant that I got, and this is a philodendron this time around, and this was an add-on to another order, and I can't remember if this was with the UPI, and I got them both, I think. There's another Grow Tropicals purchase, basically, and this was a, I'll just add that in the basket. This was small, and it is still small, not had it for that long. I'm hoping this will get big. I don't know an awful lot of people that have got this, but this I think is very similar to another plant, which is a lot more expensive. So this is the Philodendron Snowdrift. So this is very, very young still. I kind of get what the hype was about now. It is a very cool plant. Again, this wasn't that cheap for how small it was, and I'll add the price there. There is a new leaf I've just noticed that is coming through. I'm looking forward to growing this. And the plant that I was saying that this is very, very similar to, and it's almost like a dupe, a slightly cheaper dupe, although I don't think these are that cheap either, but this is kind of a dupe to the Philodendron Ilsmanii, which again, is one of those plants that I'm just like, they're lovely. I would like to own one at some point. Am I gonna pay the stupid prices that everybody else is potentially paying at the moment? No, that's just a me personal opinion. If they've got that kind of money, they want to spend it on that plant. Fill your boots. I completely support those decisions. 
But for me, it's a bit too much at the moment. This one was a bit more reasonable, even if it's quite young. And I would imagine this is going to be a slow grower, based on how little chlorophyll looks like there's on here. If you have got a snowdrift and you kind of started it young and it's bigger now, can you let me know? Because ironically enough, what I'm finding on this is apparently this is fast growing and it's an easy philodendron. It might be, I doubt it, kind of looking at it, but let me know. Yeah, if you've got this, how are you finding this in your collection, basically? Surprise! This is Editing Memo, who actually just popped down to the conservatory because I remembered that I missed, I thought, a plant from this video. I missed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight plants from this video. So without further ado, should we look at the next plant? So going along the same line as that white miracle slash Calathea white fusion recently, and this is another Grow Tropicals order, I got the Calathea yellow fusion. And this is a bit more of a substantial plant. I'll bring it in so you can see it a bit better. I do have this, this is an interesting one, because a lot of, somebody made a comment the other day that said, oh, I've got one of these, the white one at least, and everybody's talking about that like, it won't do well in low light. Mine has only ever done well in lower light. So I've got this now growing quite low on a shelf underneath a grow light, but not the one that doesn't get particularly bright. I will say, this is cool. Would I have got the white fusion? I don't know because I've got the other one now and it's kind of similar. But I thought yellow fusion, why not? Let's see if it's any hardier, basically. But, and this was another kind of add-on I'm gonna be checking out anyway. Let's add this onto the basket as well. But you know what? Actually kind of happy. I've put this in obviously in a clear pot with my kind of holes that I pierce in so you can get the airflow going through. And this was again, I'd kind of finished the Monstera and Philodendron Soil Ninja soil mix. So this is in their regular house plant, kind of the, the standard mix basically that they do. But so far, this one I've not had for an awful lot of days. There is a leaf that's coming in at the moment. There is one that's got a tiny bit of burning. I'm trying to see if I can show you there. But I think that might have been through kind of like being bashed around a bit and shipping. Not that generally the Grow Tropical plants are bashed around through shipping because they package them exceptionally well. But uh, yeah, so this was another one that was purchased recently. Shall we go for one that I got from the garden nursery, the one that I was talking about a moment ago? And, or a moment ago on this video, this is a good few days later now, but you know, it's like editing memo brain is in at the moment. Say hello to me finally <laughs> growing the same way that my Sylvaticum is, and I'm not surprised. I was thinking it might struggle a bit because this one's supposed to be more difficult, but the Piper Crocatum, Crocatum? I think it's Crocatum the one that's got the pink venation on the leaves. This is a brand new tendril that has just come out recently. And this has been growing quite, quite happily. And you know what? I did what I said on one of my videos with this one. I've just added it right next to my Sylvaticum. That is growing very happily in a position that I didn't think was gonna give it enough light, but it's growing very, very happily. So I'm just like, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So yeah, the, the crocatum, I kind of get it now. I get it. It's got the, the kind of red backside of the leaves. It's got the pinkiness on, let me just hide my face, on the actual foliage as well. It's beautiful as well. Do I think it's any better than the Sylvaticum? Not necessarily. Was this more expensive than the Sylvaticum for less of a plant? Yes, I think it was. So, but not a huge amount of money, basically. And I do like the Pipers. No, a lot of people talk about the Pipers. This was one that was kind of a bit of a flash in the pan. Everybody kind of wanted the Pipers. Some people got them and people moved on to the next big thing, which I think at that point might have been the Skindapsis. And I think they've moved on since then as well. But 
Yeah, this is really cool. I really, really like this and it surprised me actually. So very, very happy to have added this in the collection. This is probably one of the ones that I bought a while back. So this, this has probably been in my care already for about a month, month and a half, I would say. So yeah, the Piper Crocatum. Shall we move on to the other parts of the Grow Tropical Orders? So that was one order, the one that had the Calathea Yellow Fusion. And that wasn't the original reason I bought that, that I got that order. This plant was the original reason why I got that order. And I added in an add-on plant, which you'll see next, which is one that I wanted, which is hysterical, because I think that one was on my wish list. But this is... The Syngonium chiapens, chiapensi, and it's relatively small still, but I wanted this for a long, long time and I didn't have the chance to get it. I know that there's a variegated version as well of this, and this might not be for everybody, but let me just show you. Hopefully that's going to come through. Yes, you can see the veination, and this is something that my Queen Anthurium does as well when the leaves are emerging. So this is a newest leaf, or this is the newest leaf, but this one hasn't fully hardened off, considering what I'm feeling from the rest of them. But they get this kind of veination pattern, which I think is really cool. And I don't think people talk about this enough. This is, for me, would be reason enough to consider a plant. It's really, really interesting when it's coming out as a new leaf before it fully hardens down. And everybody's just like, oh, but it's pink when it's hardening now, looking at the Linamia now that's just gone this muddy peachy colour now. First leaf it's had. I'm not gonna lie with the Linamia. I'm so far underwhelmed. And I'm quite glad I never paid the prices that they were charging for it a while back. It might have been because that was the first leaf that's come into my care. I was thinking bubblegum pink when it was coming in. It was a really ruddy pink. I've not had the best success with pink plants, I will say. I will say the Crocatum is an actual pink. It's not a bubblegum pink, but I wasn't expecting it to be bubblegum pink. Sorry, off topic. But yeah, this has been really cool. And the one thing, I think some people might have mentioned this, the feel of these leaves, and it's more on the newer leaves before it fully hardens down. I don't think the baby leaf, oh no, the baby leaf. I can't describe the feel of this. It's not quite velvety. Uh, best description I can give you for this is if you ever had like a puppy with floppy ears, like short haired puppy, and you know when you like touch their ears and it's that really super, super soft kind of feel. It's that. I don't think even my other kind of fuzzy plants or slightly kind of like soft plants Nothing quite has the feel of this. Very, very cool. So very happy that I got this and it shipped well, actually. Let's move on to the addition that was also part of my original wish list. <laughs> and I'm quite glad I got this. The reason why I wasn't going out of my way to get this, I think they had it for a while, is that I got a kind of dupe of this with the, oh, and I'm going to forget, oh, the Philodendron Pellora Ents. This is very juvenile still, but this is the Philodendron Holtonianum strappy leaf kind of Philodendron. And this is, for all intents and purposes, what most people know as the Tesla plant. And I did, as I said, I've had it in my wish list video. I wanted to get the Tesla plant. The Pelora ends is very similar. It still gets that T shape for the Tesla plant. I am curious to see if this is going to be different. And again, this is the thing that I've been saying throughout most of this video is when things become a bit more affordable, you're more likely to then go, oh, maybe I wasn't planning on getting that, but actually now let's just add it into the basket and I'm curious to see how it grows. And you might end up falling in love with this. And it's, it's been good so far. Again, I have not had, so the Calathea, the Syngonium, and this, I've probably only had for a few days now. So I, I can't really make any judgment on whether or not I've fallen head over heels in love with them. 
it's early days still. So I might end up loving this a lot. The chia pens, <sighs> but yeah, so far so good. It shipped well. This actually, I think I put into the plant prescription premium soil mix. Oh, I really, really like that soil mix. I'm doing an event down in London with the people from Plant Prescription, uh, kind of middle towards end of August. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm really hoping that they've got, gonna have some more of their premium mix soil because I am so grabbing some of that. Really, really love it. Um, and it's nice because they're not the, the kind of soil ninjas of the world. They're not people that just do soil. They, they're predominantly, I think, a plant store. So very cool. But yeah, really cool plant. Let's see what becomes of it. And now get ready for a barrage of four orchids. I know a lot of people might not be into orchids, but these are quite interesting ones. And I'll see if I can add pictures of what blooms look like, because none of these pictures, none of these pictures, none of these orchids, words. Mm. I've already had two coffees today. This shouldn't be happening, but yeah. Um, but yeah, with this, none of these orchids are in bloom yet. I'm hoping maybe one or two of these might bloom this year before the winter. I doubt it, but I'm okay with that. And it's, it's fine. None of these are particularly mind-blowing in terms of their foliage, but the blooms is where it's at, and all of these are fragrant orchids. And if you've not experienced a fragrant orchid, I highly recommend it. So first one is a plant that I have now got the species of. So, and this was an eBay purchase actually. All four of these were an eBay purchase and they were quite sweet and they sent uh, a gift. I think it's because the order was quite sizable. Um, a succulent as far as I'm aware and I cannot remember the name and I will add the name there in a picture here. It looks a bit like a lithops but I don't think it is technically from what I was seeing online. But if you've got it and you know care for it and you're happy to share, do let me know in the comments down below. Mm. But this is the species and these are North Mountains. Remember we had a video a while back. I still love these. These are great, especially because game changer when it comes to mounting anything now, because it's so much less effort. They kind of, you can put the sphagnum moss and the, the actual root mass in there and there's little tabs and you can just wind the, wind, the twine or I've got fishing line on mine around and it's a lot easier to just set them up basically. It seems like less of a faff. But this is the species of Brassavola nodosa. And again, I've got Matthew and Stephen at Plant Daddy Podcast to thank for introducing me to a plant that I had never heard of before. And this is the orchid that's also called Lady of the Night. And the reason for that is because it blooms at night. The the blooms are quite interesting, but apparently the smell is something between jasmine and lemon flavor. And it's supposed to be very, very strong at night. And I have got one that's about to bloom. I've got the Brassavola nodosa Susan Fuchs, because that's the only one I could find. And all of these orchids, by the way, are from an eBay seller that I have bought for years now for both Hoyas, some philodendrons, a lot of orchids as well, called Spisotics. They've been really, really good. I've had great experiences with them. I kind of came across them in the beginning of the pandemic and I have been buying happily from that same seller for years now. But that was one of their plants, the Susan, Susan Fuchs Brassavola nodosa. It's not to say that they sent me a bad plant, it's that I really didn't know the care of it. And actually the moment that I put it on a mount, is the moment that it not only got a flower spike, but it's kept it and it's growing as flower spike now. So I cannot tell you after three and a half years of trying to grow a flower spike on this plant that's meant to be easy, how happy I am. But I thought it might be because it's the Susan Fuchs and not the species. This is the species. So this is the Brassa Volinidosa species. So it's not one of the hybrids. And technically this is meant to be super, super easy to both grow and get to bloom. Is this, e is this happy now on the mount? It really is. And you can see the kind of the, the foliage is very stiff, 
but it's kind of very grass-like and you'll see one more orchid that looks very similar to this. I would imagine there's some parentage in that orchid that comes in from the Brassavella endosa because this is an orchid that has been hybridized with a lot of other orchids to give more fragrant blooms. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing if this will bloom. This is one that I'm thinking might, 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 might bloom this year for me. I don't know, but time will tell. I know orchids generally don't ship particularly well and you might have to wait a year before you get anything. So I'm all right with that. It's fine. But yeah, the Brassabola medosa. And let's move on to the similar plant that I was talking about. And you can see the heritage on this one. And I think this one is, I'm trying to find, they also send plant labels. So Rincovola David Sandy. So you can kind of see the, the Brassavola nodosa nod there as well. And you can see this plant. So the kind of grass lights, fronds or leaves, are much, much taller. It might just be because of the way that it was growing. This one had a new growth point and it is a turgid. I love when kid leaves are turgid. It means they are happy and well watered. But um, they, you can see that it gets this kind of paperiness around the leaves. But yeah, this one again came in perfect condition. I don't know whether or not you might be able to see if you've never seen there's a very deep furrow in the middle of the leaves. Same thing goes for the Brassavola nodosa, same thing goes for the Brassavola nodosa Susan Fuchs. Very cool plant. And there is something very slightly kooky and architectural about some of these orchids because yeah they're very slightly alien looking and you know me I like my weird plants. Very cool, very happy with it, really glad I got this. And this is kind of linking back to that collab video that I did with North. Thanks again, North, for doing that with me. I'm, I'm assuming you might be watching this. Tell me what you think of the orchids as well, because I know that you've had orchids for a while. But uh, yeah, really super, super stoked to have got these. See, labels, labels. I wouldn't be anywhere with labels, especially with the orchids, because I'm not au fait with the names. I'm not so used to saying those names for such a long time. This is an Oncidium Twinkle Mona, but this is what would be the pseudobulb type of orchids. And you can see there, it's quite a nice round. It's very, very turgid. Leaves are a bit like grass and you can see the rest of them I kind of did it so the leaves were going up. This one was so, the way that it came in the pot, I could only put it so that it goes outwards. I'm assuming at some point some of the foliage might turn up or some of the newer pseudobulbs when they come out. I have got one other pseudobulb type orchid and I am trying to remember Bulbophyllum Elizabeth, Buckleberry Elizabeth Ann I think is what it is. And I've still not got that to bloom. That's another one that I've had for nearly two or three years. Again, I think it's bad conditions. I have since put it on a mount. Hopefully it will do better. But that one's really cool because that one you get the blooms look a bit like the alien cocoons from the movie Cocoon, if that makes sense. It's very, very odd shaped flower. So I'm waiting for that to see as well. But this one is meant to be fragrant. So it remains to see to be seen what this one will be like, but I'm definitely looking forward to this. This one has a lot less sphagnum, so it's got more sphagnum here, and it's got more of the cocoa chips in the bottom of it, because this came in, this was the only orchid that didn't have any sphagnum moss in the pot itself, and the roots were almost, think like a very fine version of the Phalaenopsis roots, unlike some of the other orchids roots. And this came in just orchid bark. So I'm assuming this one doesn't need quite as much moisture all the time around its kind of roots and it's doing okay. I've got some new growth points I've just noticed that are happening in the middle. So hopefully I might get some blooms with this. This is meant to be quite small blooms, but quite fragrant. And on to the last orchid and the last of this video that I'm filming now, I will pass you on to my past self for the actual final plant. But this is Cymbidium atropurum. Purim? Yeah. 
Oh, the Latins on this as well. So I will put names like I've been doing for most of this video, but this is a much more substantial plant. This kind of almost looks a bit like I've got like a coconut top in my hand at the moment. So this was in a bigger planter as well. You might be able to see it there. But this one's an interesting one because I think, again, fragrant, the leaves might seem very grassy and you'd assume that they're very soft. They're not, they are very thick and they are very turgid. So they all seem to be liking where I've got them, which is kind of on the wall down that bit as well, mainly because I don't have any bars on top of my, across my conservatory anymore. So the only place I can put things is to mount them against a wall. So well, that's why all of these orchids, this as I said, is fragrant like all the rest of them, but this one, if I'm not mistaken, gets a flower spike that comes across and it's quite a few blooms on that flower spike and it's quite long. So I am looking forward to what this one is gonna be like, but yeah, very, very cool orchids. And as I said, I shall let you go back to the actual final plant in this video. Right, and wrapping up with the last plant, and this is a <laughs> second plant of a plant that I've already got from one of the Equigenera orders. <laughs> Monstera Oblica Peru. Because now you can buy two, and it's not an obscene amount of money. This one was again from Grow Tropicals. They did a kind of pre-order for a lot cheaper. And again, this is another one that I saw in the garden center, granted slightly, slightly, not a lot more expensive than what Grow Tropicals were like kind of offering it up as a pre-order. But yeah, the reason why I got this, and I know I have got the other one there and I'll see if I can add a clip here to see what it looks like. That one is in semi-hydromix. And I always said that I was gonna try it in semi-hydromix and push my luck in here as well. It's doing okay. It's surviving, just. It's not got any root rot because I've recently repotted it and I just wanted to make sure it's fine. Does it run a lot? Yes. Did I try the cakey paste on it from a previous video? Yes. Did that work? Yes. Did I remove the runner past the bits that I'm getting the new growth after the cakey paste? Yes. Have I propagated or attempted to propagate those runners? Yes. Have nearly all of them failed and gone crispy in a propagation box? Yes. So I thought, you know what? This wasn't that, 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 that expensive. That I'm just like, you know what, I wasn't planning on getting a second one, but for that price, I'm willing to get a second one and try it in the Monstera and Philodendron mix from Soil Ninja and see how it goes. Because as I mentioned on previous videos and a few videos now, if I want a plant to grow big, I will get it in an arrowed soil mix of some variety. If I want it to be a bit more stable and slow down and I can kind of handle its watering, I will put it in a semi-hydro mix. So let's see shall we but yeah in kind of summation after all of these things and thanks for bearing with me and kind of partaking in my joy of finally getting some of these plants that i've been wanting for years i think we are seeing we're definitely seeing the tides change but seeing the tides change in a very substantial way at least in the uk and europe i don't know if it's the same all over the world at the moment but some of these plants that were very difficult to come by are now coming out from the big nurseries in the Netherlands, for here at least, for relatively affordable prices. So if you were really keen to get some of these plants, and again, you didn't want to spend that crazy amount of money and you still want to get those plants because that version of you from a few months or a few years back wants to get it, now might be the time to do so. They're coming out a bit more. Are they probably gonna drop a bit more in price? Probably. So like, even if you can't afford what they're being sold in now, hold out for a bit longer and then they'll kind of get there. But it kind of comes full circle to previous kind of chats that we've had or other videos about the price of things. And I will mention the really obvious ones here. Can you remember the stupid prices a few years back for the pink princesses and everybody ended up with a caca colored 
pink princesses and very little pink variegation. There's a lot more princess, pink princesses that are coming out to the market now with a lot better levels of variegation. The people that waited and got them now, they've probably got better versions of the plants, generally. <laughs> the Raphidophora tetrasperma, that was an obscene amount of money for a Raphidophora tetrasperma, the variegata one I'm talking about now. And whatever weird name people gave it, basically, it's a variegated tetrasperma, basically. It's come down in price, because guess what? It's a tetrasperma, it grows like a weed, probably slightly slower than the green version, but not that far off, basically. Same thing with the Monstera adansonia. Crazy prices for the variegated one. Now you can get the mints. You can, I, again, I saw the mint, I saw the white version, I saw all of these different, and the, the yellow variegated version in the nursery, in, in the nursery, in the garden center that I was talking about. It's also a nursery at the same time, but. I saw it there again coming over because they've got these little labels from like the Dutch nurseries. For a lot less money and obviously if it's coming from those big plant nurseries in the Netherlands, they're going to be coming out in mass. The UPI I have to say I was surprised by, even the, because I've put things back into their own places, even the Paraiso Verde I've been surprised by because I didn't think that many people were after them. But it's great to see. So essentially, it comes full circle. Just wait for a bit. Most of these plants will eventually come down in price. At least that's what we've seen over the last five to six to seven years. It's the way that the market moves, basically. But yeah, hopefully I haven't bored you with this one and you've seen enough of these. I hopefully won't be doing another one of these for a while now, unless I do another collab with one of you lovely arts. And I'm so glad that you all loved the video that we did with North. And I do encourage you, if you've got any of your own that you kind of want to show your collection, you want to talk about a plant that you're particularly proud of, or you want to do a haul, or you want to do an unboxing, let me know and let's organize it. I love being able to interact with you like that. But yeah, I shall let you be. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day as well. And I shall see you very, very soon. Thanks. Bye.